Dear Righteous and Loving Father, as we gather tonight again to learn some more about your wisdom, your knowledge, your words, Lord, be with us. In the mighty name of Jesus, let teaching be easy in Jesus' name. And our topic, saints, our topic for tonight is who is the destroyer? Glory be to the Lamb of God. And we all know who the destroyer is, the devil and his agents. Hallelujah. About 95 E.C. while in exile on the hills of Patmos, the Apostle John was given in a vision a glimpse of the end of the age, Revelation 1 verse 10, called the day of the Lord in numerous Old and New Testament scriptures during this, hallelujah, day of the Lord, Ra, hallelujah, God will punish humanity for their proud, sinful ways and the, their refusal to knowledge him as the true God. John recorded the vision he saw in the book of Revelation. One of those punishments chronicled in Revelation 9, 1 to 11 will be the release of depraved demons and fallen angels currently locked in the abyss. The Bible teach that the abyss is a spirit prison. Luke 8, 31 and 1 Peter 3, verse 19 and 1 Peter 2, verse 4 and Judges 6 teach that. In the abyss, some of the fallen angels are known, now bound in everlasting chains under darkness, waiting for the judgment of the great day. For more information, saints, on the angels and the abyss. Hallelujah. The refer to fallen angels and demons in Genesis 6, who were the sons of God. In Revelation 9, 11, an intrigue, intriguing character is introduced. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Abaddon and Apollyon both mean destroyer. Who is the ruling spirit? Hallelujah. Call the destroyer. Who is released from the abyss during God's wrath on mankind in the last days of this age? Does the Bible mention this being anywhere else? Glory be to the Lamb of God. The true identity of the destroyer has no long been misunderstood glory to the lamb of god in this article i will attempt to piece together all the relevant scriptures to show who abaddon and apollyon really is and what his role will be in the end times prophecy most have never realized how much the bible has to say about his vital end time glory to god and figure who is called by the variety names. Glory be to the Lamb of God, the destroyer release. Let's start by reviewing the event that will allow the powerful fallen angel entrance into the world. This occurrence is recorded in Revelation 9, 1 to 11. To rightly understand who this king of the bottomless pit is, it's vital to correctly interpret what this message is saying. We must be guided by scripture, not our imaginations. 
Glory be to the Lamb of God. First notice, saints, that the sounding of the fifth trumpet and angel stars descends out of heaven to the earth. This angel has in his possession a key to the abyss, also called the bottomless pit. With the keys and the angels unlocked the abyss, it is very likely that this is the same angels who later comes from heaven again with the key and a great chain to imprison Satan in the abyss for the duration of millennium. Revelation 21 to 3. Regarding the locusts which ascend out of the abyss. Hallelujah. God grant these evil locusts from the abyss the power which scorpion have, the power to inflict pain. God tell these heralds, demon, and fallen angel not to harm the hurt or those humans who have is sealed on their forehead. Yet for five months, God permit them to torment the un repentant among among mankind glory be to the lamb of god follow on saints here we have a fantastic description of what these released demons look like the five month period of their torture of mankind is also hallelujah in verse 10 then in verse 11 we have or first mention of Abaddon, he also is identified as the angelic ruler over those who were released from the abyss. Abaddon is the beast who ascend from the abyss. Glory be to the Lamb of God, and that's an evil angel. Hallelujah. In Revelation 9 1 to 11, Abaddon is clearly identified as the king of evil spirit released from the abyss. The fact identifies him throughout the rest of the book of Revelation, twice specifically and once symbolically. Abaddon is referred to as the beast who is who come up out of the abyss revelation 11 verse 7 and revelation 17 verse 8 are clearly referring to the abaddon as the beast who will ascend from the bottomless pit what we see described in the first part of revelation 13 verse 1 is a symbolic reference to the release of abaddon from the abyss in jewish thought the abyss was often associated with the ocean depth. Hallelujah, that's where we call marine spirits. Speaking of the Greek translation and the Hebrew scriptures in use at the time of Christ, the New Unger Bible Dictionary says, the renders Hebrew Tihab, the primeval ocean genesis 1 verse 2 and psalms 24 verse 2 glory be to the lamb of god as the abyss this identification of abaddon is a primary beast mentioned in the book of revelation will help us to learn more about his activities in the end time there is one other scriptures that hallelujah to the lamb of god that mentioned the release of abaddon from the abyss this obscure reference to found in second Thessalonians 2 where paul discusses the man of sin we look at the passage in the depth the truly grasp in significance of what Paul is saying. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Here is Paul talking about the return of the Messiah. He tells the Thessalonian church 
not to be deceived. If someone tell them that Christ has already returned because some definite event has to occur before that event will happen, the first of those events is falling away, the breakaway of the church, the breakaway of the saints. Glory be to the Lamb of God. From the truth, another event Paul say must take place is the appearance of the man of sin who will attempt to uproar the power of God. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Paul say that the Thessalonian knows what is now restraining the man of sin in verse 6, yet he doesn't state that it is in his letter. Paul has already taught the Thessalonian these things. Glory be to the Lamb of God. When he had been with them earlier in verse 5, the Greek word translated restraining here is kathion, according to the fry birds. Hallelujah. Analytical lexicon in the Greek New Testament. This verb means old, back, detain, prevent. Hallelujah. Figuratively restrained, checked. Hallelujah. The phrase only he who knows restrain will do so until he is taken out of the way in the letter half of verse 7 implies that the one restraining the man of sin is a person however the greek text here literally reads only to the things holding back no will continue until until out of the midst he come hallelujah with understanding of what is taught in the revelation about the release of Abaddon, we can see what Paul is saying. The, the following translation of verse 6 and 7 clarifies this passage, saints. Paul is go, Paul going on to say that only after his release from which is now restraining him would the lawless one be revealed to mankind verse 8 well look at the last half of verse is a little letter and shown how to relate to some other prophetic scripture daniel 7 verse 26 and daniel 8 verse 25 and revelation 19 verse 20 the symbolic description of abaddon and his kingdom in symbolic language other than and the kingdom he will rule over the described in details in the 13th and the 17th chapter of revelation these chapters give us the great deal of information let's examine them saints along with several other parallels scripture to see we can learn about this ruling fallen angels and his end time kingdom the last half of verse one described abaddon in symbolic term hallelujah to determine what the scriptures mean we'll have to we will have to look at some related passage in revelation 17 glory to the lamb of god follow on saints where are explanation of these heads of horns is given as you can see by comparing revelation 17 verse 3 to revelation 13 verse 1 the scarlet beast and the woman rides look very similar to the beast which arose from the sea glory be to the lamb of god there are several options about the identity of the woman in the passage. We are told that the woman is riding, being supported by the beast. Abaddon and his kingdom, Revelation 17 verse 5, tell us that the woman is the mother of Arlot, her Arlot daughters, hallelujah, 
and the ungodly governmental system of this world. The great harlot is the sun total of the satanical inspired religious associational governmental system in the extent sin, the falling of man in the garden of Eden. Glory to the Lamb of God. Revelation 17 verse 5 tell us that the woman is Babylon the Great. Babylon the Great is falling will fall and will have to fall this fact is verified in revelation 17 verse 18 and revelation 18 24 tell us that in this woman was found the blood of prophets of and of saints and of all who have been slain on earth these scriptures declare that this woman is responsible Responsible for the blood of everyone who has her ever been slain on the earth. Obviously, this cannot represent any one human system. Babylon the Great is false religious, societal, governmental system of Satan, who has been a murderer. From the beginning, John 8, 44, the harlot is the mother of all angelic human governmental system that has ever existed apart from God. The original version of this system culminated in the Tower of Babel under Nimrod, the first type of the Antichrist, and the end time version of the system will be aided by the beast and ten horns and will eventually be destroyed by them revelation 17 verse 16 in fulfillment of god's will now let us examine the scarlet beast riding by the great harlot what does the angels mean when he tells john that the beast he saw was and is not the will come the language used definitely implies a time element as stated earlier. John likely record the prophecy around the year 95 BC. The angels clearly tell John that all that points in time, the beast is not present tense. Yet the angel says that the beast was past tense, glory be to the Lamb of God. And he also said that the beast will come up out of the abyss, future tense. What are to make of the cryptic statement, saints? Glory be to the Lamb of God. Actually, the explanation isn't that difficult to understand. The Ab Abaddon was free in times before the flood to interact with humanity yet because of the devious and destructive nature of his sin god saw that it was necessary to imprison and thereby restrain him therefore at the time john received his vision abaddon was not because he was locked in the abyss however the angels makes clear this beast will be in the future hallelujah he will be freed from the imprisonment and will come up out of the abyss however abaddon is not the only entity that seemingly risen up from nowhere glory be to the lamb of god the kingdom of abaddon appropriate and rules over figuratively come up from the bottomless pit. Also, this kingdom is represented as the beast with seven head and ten horns. What does the Bible tell us about the symbolic representative of these features and the beast? In the Bible, a mountain figuratively represent a kingdom or ruler of kingdom the new hunger bible dictionary states 
Therefore, the seven mountains and the seven kings refer in the Revelation 17 verse 9 to 10 are one and the same. What does the angel mean when he says that five have fallen one, one is and the other has not yet come? Again, the angel giving John a time sensitive clue as of 95 EC5 of the symbols head kingdom of the beast had already fallen from power. Those five were Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo Persia, Greece. The kingdom, the power at the time of Apocalypse was written was Rome. Some may wonder how we can know that the six kingdoms listed above are correct. There is one overriding principle about the Bible giving us assurance the Bible was written about and for the people of God, the six kingdom list above all have one thing in common that identifies them as the first six head of the beast. They were satanical inspired human em empires that rule over God's chosen Israel. Glory be to the Lamb of God. That means that there is one remaining head yet to come which will rule over God's people. This last empire will be global in scope as God tell us in the seventh chapter of Daniel. In his vision, Daniel saw four beasts, a lion with eagle wings, a bear, a leopard with four head, and four wings and a terrible beast with iron teeth and thin horn daniel 7 3 to 7. the beast john saw or see come up out of the abyss revelation 13 verse 2 contain elements of the beast seen by daniel it is an amalgamation of all the satanic empire that have come before it. For more information, saints, you have to read in Revelation and in Daniel. Glory be to God, the beast of Revelation and Daniel, the fourth beast Daniel saw is the same as the seventh head of the beast John saw. It is soon coming global government. Those are the beasts. Hallelujah. The new world order which will arise out of the chaos that occurred during opening of the first four seal, Revelation 6, 1 to 8, Daniel saw that this one world government will be reigned over ten kings called horns and another little horns. Hallelujah. Daniel 7 verse 24, God tell us in Revelation 17 verse 10 that this new world order will last only for a very short time. Revelation 13 verse 2, record that apparent demish, the mist of the seven head of the beast. What is this apparently deadly wound that will be inflict of the seven head of the beast? Daniel give us the cause of the wound. He was wounded, but he was not dead. The fourth beast of Daniel 7 has ten horn, which we know the symbol for the king or kingdom. These horn represent the ten kings or nation that will control the end time global government. In this version, Daniel saw a little horn ascend as risen up among those ten Hallelujah. This little horn, Abaddon, king of the abyss, will definitely be different from the first ten kings. 
probably using the evil spirit forces God allowed to be released upon mankind during the fifth trumpet as his army Abaddon will conquer and or destroy three of the ten rulers of the new world order says if you look around no you see who is destroying and what is going on in the world glory be to the lamb of god and their nation is so doing he will appear to have more tally wounded the seventh head the ruler world government however instead of totally destroying the satanic governmental structure abaddon will seize control of it and become its leader as revelation 17 verse 8 tell us almost the whole world will be amazed when they see abaddon rises up the beast is not one of the seven he is the hate yet clearly he is of the seven that is he that he is given the authority by satan revelation 13 verse 4 just as the seven head were ab abaddon will either rehabilitate the tree king he plucked out by the root daniel 7 verse 8 or he will replace them with three other will pledge him their support glory to the lamb of god with the 10 kings revelation 17 verse 12 to 13 abaddon will become the ruler of the entire earth in the ultimate and final realization of satan governmental system after the resurrection of the more tally wounded seven head almost the entire world will worship satan who gives abaddon his authority they will also worship the antichrist because of his conquest of the new world order hallelujah this is where you can't buy you can't sell if you don't have the mark the length of abaddon's reign the bible tells us in several places how long abaddon will reign it is stated as 42 months revelation 13 5 or a time and a time and a half a time daniel 7 25 and daniel 12 verse 7 which literally is one year two year and a half a year or a total of three and a half year glory be to the lamb of god revelation 11 3 mentioned the same time span in days and equates in with the testimony of two witness the period in which the two witness gives their testimony likely matches the 42 months that abaddon is in authority the abad abadam abad abomination of desolation in the heavenly sanctuary several scripture record the blasphemous act of abaddon during the time of his rule let's look at those passages says the Amharic root word Quadish literally means holy one. It can be translated either as saints or as angel, as we will soon see from Carol's scripture translation. This world as angels appear to be the correct rendering in most instant listed above. This passage show that Abaddon will speak against the eternal God and will attack the holy angels. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Saints, you also need to pray for your guardian angels. Hallelujah. As you can see in Revelation 13, verse 6, along with God himself, the heavenly. Glory be to God, the heavenly 
heavenly tabernacle and those who dwell in heaven, the holy angels and special targets of Abaddon, blasphemy the word saints in Revelation 13 verse 7. Hallelujah. Is this Greek word hagion? Although this word is generally used as human, it can also refer to God's holy angel. This used can be found in the Septuagint. Hallelujah. And in the New Testament, 1 Thessalonians 3 verse 13. Analytically, to the Greek New Testament, give the identification for Hagion in 1 Thessalonians 3 verse 13 has the Holy One as designation for angels. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Revelation 13, 6 to 7 shows that Abaddon and his spiritual force of evil are permitted to fight against the holy angels and temporarily defeat them. The defeat will allow Abaddon to occupy the courtyard of the temple in heaven and proclaim himself to be God. Saints, be, be wise in the time and season. Hallelujah. Be careful of false teachers, false prophets. Hallelujah. Paul clearly said that Abaddon will occupy the temple of God, take a seat in it, and, and declaring himself to be God, saints, please do not mock, please do not be fooled. Hallelujah. The Greek word translates temple here is no one a form of unknown Noah's. It generally refers to the outer holy place of the inner holy of holies in the temple proper. However, it is also used to the Bible to refer to the temple complex, including the courtyard. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Most people interpret the temple of God in 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 4 as either a rebuilt temple in Jerusalem or figuratively as the church, yet the Bible clearly shows that the temple, tabernacle, and a later temple in Jerusalem were earthly type patterned after the heavenly antitypes, types patterned after the heavenly. Hallelujah. Exodus 25 verse 9, Hebrew 8 verse 2. E and Hebrew 5, Hebrew 9, verse 11 to 23. Glory be to the Lamb of God. It appears from scriptures that Abaddon presents in the courtyard of the heavenly temple is one aspect of the abomination and desolation spoke by Daniel and Christ. This heavenly desolation will almost certainly have the earthly counterpart of Jerusalem. Abaddon and his army will be given victory over the host. Glory be to God. The army of heaven, he will overthrow the sanctuary of the prince of the host, Yeshua and Messiah, and will cause the regular burnt offering and cease from 2,300 evenings and morning. The evening and morning are referred to the time of the daily sacrifice. This means that the actual time period being defined is only 1,150 days and a half of 2,300. If Daniel truly referred to the temple of God in heaven, then what? are the daily sacrifice that Abaddon will cause to cease. The New Testament show that sacrifice remain believers, though sacrifice or spiritual sacrifice, which include praise and prayer of God. People to eternal creator 
of the universe, it is likely that these are the sacrifice spoken of here. In addition, it is also possible that an altar will be erected on the Temple Mount of Jerusalem, literally physically sacrificed in accordance with the Masonic law will once again be offered thereby Jew seeks God's favor as the world turned against them once more. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Below is Gabriel's explanation and Daniel's version. Gabriel clearly states that the event Daniel saw in his vision will occur at the time and the end, and that time when transgressor, transgressor have reached their full measure, Abaddon will come once on the scene. His power and authority will come from Satan. Revelation 13 verse 4, the destroyer will live up to his name. He will destroy mighty and the holy ones, both saints and the holy angel, as well as those humans as oppose him. He will dilute himself because of pride in his accomplishments, thinking even pride in his accomplishments. Proclaim that he is God. Second Thessalonians 2 verse 4. He will oppose Messiah, the prince of princes, princes, but he will eventually be defeated without human beings, as we will see in the next session. Saints, even if no if mankind isn't ready when God returns, Abaddon and Absalom, the devil, cannot win. Hallelujah. Glory be to the to the Lamb of God. So keep your faith and trust in the Lord. It doesn't matter what you are going through, saints. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter who the devil sent to raise up their hungry head. Keep pressing to the mark. Hallelujah. Because in the end, every tub have to sit on their own bottom when the Lord ready to judge and reward. Hallelujah. Glory be to the, the Lamb of God. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and to lose his one soul? What does it profit a man to be lovers of self? They alone must have this and that and up there and while they put you down what it is what does it profit you hallelujah you still can live a great lifestyle and be good have a good heart a good mind and cleanse yourself from sinning unto righteousness glory be to the lamb of god these forces will then march towards Jerusalem at this great battle. Yeshua, the prince of the army host of heaven, will destroy the army of the beast and capture him. Then Abaddon, along with the false prophets, will cast into the lake of fire. What does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his only soul? What does it profit you to be lovers of self? What does it profit you to be boast and prideful? What does it profit you to kill your brothers and your sister? Why is it that your brother and your sister blood should be crying from beneath the hurt? Glory be to God. What mankind can't see, God sees all. He sees all. He knows all. He's omniscient and he's omnipresent. He's omnipotent. Hallelujah. God is just sitting back and giving us time to repent. But the Lord is being impatient now. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Let us look at one other passage, Isaiah 14. Hallelujah. It explicitly shows the defeat and fat of the Abaddon. This scripture is commonly thought 
to refer to Satan. However, if we looked at the context and put away or pro-conceived ideas, it becomes apparent that the Antichrist, not Satan, is the subject. Glory be to the Lamb of God. And I'm closing here, saints. This scenes is set in verse 1 through 3. This is a time when God has given rest to his people. This is the millennium when the Israelites will be back in their land and Yeshua will be ruling from Jerusalem. Verse 4, identifying the subject of the passage, Abaddon, the king of Babylon. Verse 5 to verse 8 shows that God has broken his power of this king who had oppressively ruled the world. Verse 9 shows that the Abaddon has been cast into Sheol. Sheol is used figuratively for the abundance of those who are dead. In the instant, those worldly leaders who were under the king are specifically mentioned. Verse 10 show that symbolically exalting in the fact that the Antichrist, although at one time extremely powerful, has suffered the same fact they suffered. Verse 11 reaffirmed that this arrogant king has been delivered to Sheol. Hallelujah. It's clear that Abaddon is no longer around during the millennium. Millennium. In verse 12, this defeated king is given a name, Hillel. Some translate render this Hebrew name as Lucifer, which is Latin for light bearer. However, the real meaning of Hillel is subject to conjecture of scholars. The theologian dictionary of the Old Testament says that the Hitabel from of it means pride oneself often with overturned of brag boast i was just saying those words hallelujah that means fit nicely with the discussion of the aragon king in the passage glory be to the lamb of god in this prophecy abaddon although he conquered the nations and even heavenly for the conquered, glory be to God, has fallen from heaven and been cut out, has fallen from heaven, has been cut down to the hurt. In verse 13 and 14, we see that the Antichrist decided to ascend above the cloud and the stars into heaven. He wanted to establish his throne there at the very place of god heavenly temple this mount of assemble he wants nothing less than to rule in the place of god jealous and bad mind backbites no one can raise their ugly head above god god is all by himself yet in verse 15 through to 20 shows that he will be brought down to sheol at this is power destroy and the team of the entire passage is overthrown and the arrogant king Abaddon who wanted to be like the most high which he can after crushing defeat of Abaddon forces Satan the power behind the Antichrist throne will be captured also he will be locked in the abyss during the 1,000 year reign of the Messiah on earth. Conclusion. While some end time prophecies of the Bibles are still not clear, events will not occur as commonly being aspect. The beast who ascend out of the abyss during the last days will be an angelic king named Abaddon 
he will, he and his armies of fallen angels and demons will overpower the human global government and take over as rulers of the earth. Abaddon will even conquer the holy sanctuary in heaven and gain victory over the angelic host of heaven. Nevertheless, saints, his rule will be for a limited time, just a little time. Only after three and a half years, God will take his authority away and cause Babylon the Great to fall. Abaddon will marshal his force into the final attempt to destroy God's people, but he will, he will be unsuccessful. He will end up in the league of fire as Yeshua the Messiah established the kingdom of God as the beginning of the millennium. Glory be to the Lamb of God, saints, and our curtain pull down here. Glory be to God, I trust that you learned something. Merciful Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for being here. We thank you for your Shekinah glory. We thank you for your health and your strength and for your daily provisions. We thank you for your healing. We thank you for being with us, Lord. We thank you for protecting. Glory be to the Lamb of God. We thank you for all the lights that spared. Lord, I pray that your name will be praised in all of the earth. I pray that all those agents of Satan will repent and draw nigh unto you. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Lord, forgive the enemies of their sin, for they don't know they know not what they have done. Merciful Father, forgive those inflicted who inflict your people. Lord, bind up everything that is not of God. Root up and assassinate everything that is not of God. Merciful Father. Bound everything that is not of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, protect and provide and heal your people, Lord. Give us long strength, long life, length of days. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, merciful Father, bless those who bless him, our Father. Curse those who curse me, Yeshua. In the mighty name of Jesus, glory be to God. Saints, the Lord love you. And he keep you and make his face to shine on you and give you all the desires of your hearts. Remember, Jesus loves you and I love you with the love of Christ. Remember, saints, if you don't have anything good to say, say nothing at all. And saints, walk, ride, and drive safe. Saints, though the enemy rise upon you, please be focused in the Lord. The battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. I love you, my people. Shalom.